here we go. All right, so we'll go look at the screen. You guys are on this journey and you're so close to Emerald City. I had to do the Wizard of Oz. <laughs> so he, this is just the announcements. And again, you see the coffee time. I hope you all listen to the final countdown. Here's our Zoom link for this meeting. So I'll just continue to put announcements in there as needed. And then your syllabus and rubric are here. I have broken my rubric down into three rubrics that make up this one big rubric. And that's because we're gonna break the assignments down into three assignments. And I did veer away from the rubric that was being used um, in the other classes simply because I wanted it to be more like my regular rubric where I can know, let you know exactly what I'm expecting and you can check off the list and know that you're including everything. Um, but you guys, I don't, you probably have already looked at the syllabus maybe. No? Okay. <clears throat> so the same stuff as the other class. Um, Zoom meetings, eight to five. I said eight to five here, but it can be eight to five here because um, you guys have a lot more work in this class. And then my same thing about my days off are gonna be Thursday or Friday, Saturday, this is a syllabus that again was given to us. Um, we're dividing the three papers. We did agree as a group into 100 points per paper and then the final paper will be 300 points. Um, week two, I don't know if the other professors are asking for this, but I was asking for, um, it's sort of an outline, but not really, because I'd rather have you just put in like right away your title page then the next page be your abstract page and then make room to start doing your introduction and your headings and subheadings so that you're kind of lined up to see this is what my paper is kind of going to look like when I put it out there all the way down to the reference page. And um, I will tell you a secret. Everyone in this class should be more than capable of getting an A. Um, so there isn't much to read and I will try to throw out to you some resources additionally because I know you're going to be finding a lot of resources. But if I give you a resource here and you want to include it in your um, in your paper at all, then please do. I'm really looking for people to talk. A lot of times people talk about the code of ethics, but not as much about cultural standards. Um, the standards for cultural competence and that could be really important in your diversity discussions and another good resource for you to use um, outside of just the code of ethics so that's on here but this is sort of the schedule so I'm making the final paper due the last the second to the last week of school and that is because your third paper your third part of it will be coming back on the ninth or turned into me on the ninth week and then you should have a complete paper that you just basically have to put together and you shouldn't really have to work too hard at it, but you have nothing going on this week here. And then you'll be like, Phew, I'm done. Um, <laughs> if for some reason at this point, your final paper, um, like just you didn't take any feedback and didn't listen to anything throughout the whole rest of the time that we worked together and it's a mess, then you would have a little bit of time to correct because we are technically in session until August 5th. But um, this is an exam example here for you, a week assignment or week three assignment. Um, I'm asking you guys to do the assignment and then choose a peer. It can be a peer from school. It can be a peer at your house. It can be a peer that you're friends with at your agency, whatever. But let them give you feedback using the rubric and then start to make corrections. Maybe they notice you have misspelled words. Maybe they notice your sentence doesn't make sense. When you're writing big papers like this, trust me that sometimes your brain will just stop and you'll be like, I don't even feel like I can think right now. So that's the purpose of this. If you're also, I highly recommend take a break if you need it. Like there are times that I'll be writing, 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 and I'm like, okay, my brain just isn't even working anymore. And I'll step away and I'll come back the next morning. For me, I used to get up in my master's program at 3 a.m. 
and work on schoolwork because I worked full time and my brain's better, honestly, at the beginning of the day than at the end of work, a work day. Normally I'm pretty frazzled by then and my brain's kind of like, I'm tired, I just want to chill. So for me, that's what worked. You have to do whatever works for you. But um, give me the feedback that your peer gave you and when you turn it in in the assignment area, you should be able to upload more than one thing. And then um, I will look at what you've done after your peer review and I'll make corrections and then give it back to you with my feedback so you have an opportunity to turn it in completely with all my feedback fixed up to be a perfect paper if you want it to be and you're good and then you know this paper if I keep it this way I'm gonna get it in there and I'm gonna get 100 points in that section does that make sense so it's like gonna be a process and I want all of you to feel and be really successful um, I'm sure I probably am not going to have to give a ton of feedback to most of you. You're probably pretty fluent in all of this already. Um, but I do want to make sure that what you're turning in is a great paper for your, your final MSW project. And I went ahead on each of the rubrics and wrote what where the nine competencies are. Kind of um, So here at the micro level, you're going to be talking about the client and the plan changed model to begin with. So describe your theoretical orientation. And I tried to chunk it like this with the numbers in front and the little letters so you could kind of see like this goes together, okay? Um, you don't have to do it that way. It's just to me, if you're the more organized you can be and the with the flow and, and know like, okay, this is separate from this because this is number three and this is number four, it should just make it a little bit easier to get through in an organized way. Um, so slowly going through, and this is the syllabus. So you guys have this um, on your course and can access it anytime. Is this syllabus uploaded in a Word document or a PDF? It is a Word document. Thank you. <laughs> Why does that matter? Just because I'm curious. Um, I take out what I need and I um, cut it apart and can chunk it out of a Word document and I can't out of a PDF. It jumbles everything and it just drives my little brain crazy oh okay yeah good to know yeah it's a word document thank you sure um <clears throat> and if you think back i think most of you probably wrote about the plan change model last class like last semester um then you have the diversity and th this one is a little backwards i don't know why i did it this way <laughs> normally my my like excellent marks are on the right side. This rubric, it's right next to the competency because I kind of wanted you to have that line up and know like, um, so this column is talking about diversity, social work values, ethical issues, social and economic, political or environmental injustices. So you're gonna talk about social work values to thoroughly address A, diversity issues, B, between the client and the social worker, um, and then two, with documentation from the cultural competence um, standards. Does that make sense to everybody? Okay. And then you can see here engaging diversity and difference in practice, advancing human rights and social and economic environmental justice. So this can really hopefully help you like streamline and know, okay, this is what I'm kind of talking about and going for in this section. Then your self awareness. It's actually, I could have put by there. Um, the first one and now my mind's blanking but i did not and the same thing here's your mezzo level assignment the same thing have a peer review it get have them send in your feed their feedback make your changes send it in to me i'll give you feedback you'll get it back you send it in one more time it should be perfect or pretty close to perfect right so <laughs> and then here we go again it starts with the apa stuff and then it's going to go into group formation Identify thoroughly and discuss a group you would form or continue develop using, um, including what you're going to use to screen and recruit. Why would you form this group? Be specific about how the formation in the group occurs. Where would it meet? Why? You've, you guys have really done all of this throughout your coursework. So it, it, once you start doing it, it's probably just going to feel like, oh, this seems familiar. But now you're just putting it all together and looking at all the and you get to develop this group, right? You get to decide what the curriculum is. You get to design the curriculum. You get to 
decide how long it will meet um, as far as like, if, will it be a 45 minute group? Will it be an hour, an hour and a half? You know it's a six week course that I think is determined for you. But, and then here's the next part again. So that, yeah, the demonstrating ethical and professional behavior is part of how we evaluate ourselves and like look inward to see what triggers we have, what's going on with us, how we're gonna work with or against those that we're around. And here's where it talks about the group curriculum, trying to cover and break it down for you. So you're answering what it'll cover, how long, what happens in every session, why was it cho why was this curriculum chosen, address the goals and objectives of the group, how you're gonna evaluate it, um, what tools you'll use for the evaluation, and what time constraints do you have? What determines success for your group? And then try to use, okay, that's the other piece, and you'll see that in the next section, APA. <clears throat> Every one of these papers, the smaller ones that are due, if you will use this column on the left, it's gonna tell you eight to 10 or more new scholarly references. Coming up with eight new references, so don't repeat, like you can't count the code of ethics in every paper or you're gonna be short. But if you're coming up with a new one, you're gonna be fine. If you're coming up with less than eight, but no less than five, you're not gonna be in a terrible spot. Um, and maybe there's one section that you'll find a lot more information on. Maybe there's a section you're a lot more passionate about, but this is just to make sure you're hitting all those references because it sounds overwhelming to just say, you know, 25. So, <laughs> um, and then you're gonna identify um, a social problem you would wanna address, include the injustices in, that it causes and how it impacts the clients, what areas of diversity are impacted by the problem, how does the social problem impact you and your own value system in the profession of social work. So here you're gonna really be looking at a bigger level. It's not just the client, it's not just you anymore, it's the broader society, which is definitely in our code of ethics. Looking at policies, unintentional consequences and gaps that are not being addressed yet, how can you, how can you address them? How do they impact our practices and our clients? So you are evidence-based practice. It's gonna be very fun, honestly, I think. You're really gonna have a good time with it. <laughs> See, you all agree as you're smiling. Um, and this is the final paper and all it is, this rubric is literally just taking those three rubrics and putting them one on top of the other. So the APA stuff doesn't repeat, it's just at the top or at least I hope I didn't make it repeat. <laughs> and then this stuff should be here um, one after the other. And if you guys have questions or whatever, don't hesitate to reach out to me. Um, there's the rubrics individually if you don't want to scroll all the way through the syllabus or you just want rather print one off at a time. And then my contact information um i didn't make a well we have a zoom classroom so we can use it if we need to but you don't have to go to class um i'm glad you guys are here by the way here's your library scenario <clears throat> the story that we're supposed to be doing this on yes so um and this is the modules portion so your your rubrics are here again your library scenario is here that Professor McFadden talked about in the meeting. The instructions, and if you weren't in the meeting, it's basically just this list. So he gives you like a little introduction of what this is supposed to look like. And then micro, he wants you to include these things. I didn't use the, I did not use the rubric that was given to us because it was just one big rubric and I didn't feel that it matched up completely well with all these questions and so I took the questions and created my own rubrics that I feel like make sure more in a practical way that you can break the assignment down into three chunks and that you can address all of these questions because there are a lot okay so um Unless I skipped a question, which would be my fault, the rubric should have every one of these in there. 
Thank you for doing that. That's very appreciative. Um, real quick, also, um, I know you had it in one section. But do the other sections, do you have a recommendation for how many, um, like how much literature should be referenced for each of those? Yeah, I. it's the same across the board. The APA part on each one looks exactly the same. And what I did was take 25 and I divided it by three and it's like 24 point something. So I went with, um, at least eight and no less than five for like the exemplary definition. Um, just because if you do three sections with eight, you're at least gonna have 24. So finding one additional ref reference isn't terrible. But if you wanna do like six in one section because you just don't like, it's not as interesting or you can't find as much information on it, then you do six there and you would up it in the next area to make up that difference. Does that make sense? Okay, so as long as we have the overall 20, 25 sources, right? Yeah, the final paper calls for 25 sources. Okay, it doesn't really matter how many are in each specific category under what topic. No, I only did that to break it down and make sure that you didn't get to the end and think, oh my gosh, I only did five references in each one of these and now I need to find 10 more. Okay, I appreciate that. Just so I'm clear, so do you have like, from your professional experience, do you know if there's any sections that we maybe should focus more heavily on research for, um, or does it really matter or no? I love to learn. So for me personally, I love to research anything I'm talking about really. And part of the reason for that is because if you were ever taken to court by a client and you didn't have a reason for what you did, um, you could lose the case and lose your license. And I'm a firm believer that if I'm going to be in somebody else's life and trying to make a difference, that I need to be able to back it up with evidence. It's, it's, it is a social thing, but it's also kind of scientific when other people have gone before you and already put research out there. So from me, like even when I worked at the prison, I forget what assessment we used for suicide, but I looked up information on that to see how accurate is this and what pieces are missing from this that might be in other forms and you know because I, I wanted to make sure I covered that well and that I understood what I was covering and so if if I was writing a paper about my work there I would definitely use the references that I looked up on and researched about that assessment um, you know it's of course up to you what what you assess, what you research the most but to me any any work that I'm going to do with a client I'm going to have at least one Thing from the literature that somebody else has done or looked into so that I don't look like I'm just making this up. Right, okay, thank you so much. You're welcome. And then here's our link to Flipgrid. You could also scan your barcode in from your phone. There's the grading system. Hopefully I did the math correctly. That's why I'm a social worker. Um, but here's week one, and this is telling you exactly what I'm looking for with um, let me see if I can move this. Sorry about my dog. I don't know what he's doing. I didn't want that. <clears throat> okay. Everything is popping back up. Oh my goodness. I didn't close out of anything. I do the same thing on my phone. My daughters always scold me. <laughs> this is why your battery dies. Okay. So week one, it's basically set up like any of my other classes. Um, you can see what's coming up and well, how did I get to Flipgrid right there? Ah, here it is. I had to do the back button. I don't know why it did that so quickly. Um, click over here because this one has more stuff in it to see what all you can look at. Here's a professional paper example. I'm not putting an assignment in, so that's okay. So if you click here, you'll see the example. Um, writer's Handbook. Again, click on this link and it's gonna give you some cool information. Grammarly video by Dr. Riley Sandoval. This is a useful tool. Um, Capella actually has us use this too. We, it can check your spelling and different errors and stuff to make sure that you don't have them. And then here's a video on the 17 most notable changes for APA 7th edition. In October to that. So you have that there. 
Hi, everyone. I'm going to scream. Okay, I'm just going to go to modules. Okay. So here we have week two. Um, again, title page and abstract page. So what you would do is like just set it up like your title page. You would put your the title of what it is in the left-hand corner, the page number in the right, all caps for the title page. Go down a couple spaces and you're going to um, have the actual title, the full title in bold, but no, just capital letters where appropriate. And then the next, um, and fill it out according to that example paper that I had up there, the professional one. Then your abstract page would come next and you would just put that at the top, right? Abstract. And you could even put like keywords under it if you wanted to. Um, you don't need to do an author note, but you can if you want to. And then the, the first page of the actual paper is gonna be there and you're gonna write the introductory, place for the introductory paragraph, which should again um, be your title. And then the conclusion will be at the end of your paper. Um, you don't want to miss that. And that's another reason I'm having you guys do it this way is a lot of times when I've been grading papers from students over the past couple semesters, sometimes they forget the introduction or the conclusion. And that's really important because it kind of gives readers an organized way of what to look forward to and an organized way of circling back around and closing it out. But then your headings and your subheadings are going to go in between that introduction and conclusion. And then you'll need your reference paper at the very end. Um, and I would personally just look at the rubric. Um, I'll go back to the rubric if I can find it. So if I'm looking at my rubric, um, I like to see you guys. <laughs> If I'm looking at the rubric and I'm looking at the exemplar where I want to get the best grade I can, then I am going to start here. So I don't know what my title of this paper is going to be, but say my title was The Many Adventures of Social Work, okay? So that would be at the top of my page and I would be writing an introduction in there. My first heading would maybe be the client and the plan changed model. And then from there, I would put, what are we, you know, what am I talking about in here? Are any of these good subheadings? Um, maybe I want my subheadings to be the steps in the plan change model. Maybe I want um, a subheading to be a biopsychosocial assessment of my client and kind of give a background of the client. Um, then you would just go to the next one. And so now I can say, okay, my next heading might be diversity, values, ethics, and, and injustices. And then that would be where I'd talk about all of that. Um, and you can just keep the next one, self-awareness. So is that making sense? Another thing you could do is say micro level practice as a heading and then have the rest of them be subheadings with the different levels of subheadings. Um, it's all in how you wanna organize it and what you think is gonna be the most easily understood by your readers. Um, the whole purpose of APA is to get it organized so that you can easily read through and know what's being talked about and understand it. So if, if I can remember where I put that, um, I thought it was at the, okay, is it in here? Week one? No, that is giving me just Flipgrid again. So I don't know why it pops up that way. Okay, if you go back one space, if that happens to you, it's clearing it out. <laughs> um, so here is the professional paper example. And I have a chat. Um, oh, you're welcome. So you can see the title page, the author note. You don't have to have the author note, but I am asking for an abstract, so that's here. You can see where the keywords comes after. Here is your papers title and it's bolded but it's the introductory paragraph or paragraphs and then as you go down into this paper you'll see this 
type of subheading. It's a second level heading and it says flush left bolded and written in title case. Then underneath it is a third level head heading. So it's just kind of going from broader topic to smaller topic to smaller topic, if that makes sense. And then here's a fourth level heading if you need it. So you could very well break this down as I was um, starting to say, so that you have like micro level practice and then you start with your subheadings and go in kind of deep with those. But you don't have to, whatever you're comfortable with um, is fine with me. So let's see. Then you're gonna see week three. Um, this is when your micro level paper is due. And I've given you the code of ethics and maybe I didn't, maybe, let's see what's in here. Oh, here it is. It's the cultural um, standards for cultural competence. And I, I was telling um, Jada early, I think this is a really important piece that we overlook a lot and we just refer to the code of ethics, but this is actually designed to help you with um, more cultural issues and to understand what the standards and social work should be around that. And you can see the ethics are included, but self-awareness, cross-cultural knowledge, skills, service delivery, empowerment and advocacy. So there's a lot in here that's really good information and it gives you a second, um, a second, my, see my brain is starting to shut down. <laughs> it gives you a second thing to look at and put as a reference. And then here's where you would turn that assignment in. And I did give multiple attempts because like I said, um, first you're gonna have that peer review, turn it in with this and browse local files. So you should be able to upload more than one thing here. And then I will give you my feedback in addition to that and give it back to you. If, if I give you feedback and say this looks great um, or just make minor changes here and there, then you're, that's it, you know, you're set. If, if it needs more than that, then it will need more. Then you're gonna be talking about using um, professional language and being sensitive to various cultures. And so this, is guidelines for specialty practice and you ha see over here administration supervision aging alcohol tobacco and other job if you want to know how to address some part of your practice work it's a good idea to come here and look at the language so that way you're not kind of being unprofessional or you know not correct politically um, but unbiased communication is what we're looking for and a APA says the same thing so that is there for you as well. And you can add that as another resource. So back to the modules. Um, week three, week four, it's my 50th birthday. <laughs> I just had to throw that in there for fun. Um, Flipgrid me your questions. Don't forget you have access to that. And if don't be afraid to ask questions to the whole group that people can go on and you can get notified if somebody makes a message. And that way you don't feel so alone. Like this is an independent study, but you can still use Flipgrid to talk to your classmates and um, communicate more. So week six, June 20th, assignment number three. Did you just say that today is your 50th birthday? No. My birthday is June 6th, so. Love it. <laughs> All right, so then you really don't have anything due in here again until week nine. And there's where you're gonna submit. And it's the same process every time. Get your peer feedback, submit that along with your corrections that you made so that your paper's even better than you thought it was to begin with. And then I'm gonna give you more feedback and you're gonna get it back and make changes if you need to and resubmit for more points. So with peer feedback, uh-huh. All of the people in my area like to bleed on papers. Are you okay if we upload, like, because I can scan in what they work on, but if I ask them to do the notes on the side of Word, 
they'll send it back to me and tell me to find somebody else. So Is that okay? So you mean they'll just make notes on a sheet of paper to you? Yeah. Well, no, like right on the, like I print it out and I hand it to them and they oh, and they take mark, a pink or purple pen and. Okay. Yeah, and, I'm fine with that. However you get your feedback is fine. Um, but I would just ask that once you get the feedback, make some changes if you agree with the feedback. So that way you're giving me like a paper that's in even better shape than your original. If, if you get feedback and you think, I totally disagree with this, you can not make that change and turn it into me. And if I say, you know, hey, I think they had a good point here, or I might say, I agree with you, it's fine the way it is. But it just helps sometimes to get more than one set of eyes on papers. That totally makes sense. Anything else? Do you think we're missing anything? Do you want me to go over anything? I think the only thing I'm worried about is the flip grid. I'm good with writing a 25 page paper or having 25 references or whatever you need, but I'm like, you want me to do a what? <laughs> well, but we can go we'll into the flip grid. All right, should I stop the recording? As far as this goes, do you think it's good for information coverage?